Welcome to Hello World, where we can help you rediscover the good that is all around us. As famously quoted by Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. That is certainly the case for our guest, Rebecca Johnson. She went from feeling like she's on top of the world, that she has arrived both professionally and personally, to hitting rock bottom while staying at a, a crack house. But through determination and the goodwill of kind people. Today, Rebecca is thriving, she's serving, and she's smiling. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us and, and sharing your story. It's a pleasure. Yes, and today we're joined by Virginia Lee. She's on our podcast team, and she also has a special tie to this story and to Rebecca. You want to share? Yeah, yeah. so I'm uh, part of Goodwill. I'm on the board of Goodwill Houston, and I met Rebecca. I think the first time I met you was maybe two years ago. might even be three. And even then, I thought your story was so inspiring I was like, we've got to get Rebecca on this mm. podcast. And so that's when we, that's why you're here. So we're glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. It's just an honor and a pleasure. You know, share with our audience a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up from? What are your hobbies? Just a little bit about, so we can get to know you a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm Rebecca Johnson. I go by the name of Becky. I grew up here in Houston. So I'm a native Houstonian. Okay. I'm single. My mom's a single parent, mm -hmm. so I'm a product of a single parent household. Mm -hmm. My mother worked um, for Texas Instruments for 37 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So she was really good with making sure that she provided for me. Mm -hmm. With doing that, she was always at work. Mm -hmm. so I was kind of on my own at home. Mm -hmm. I have one daughter, uh, Ashley. She is 26, she'll be 27. She's in college, okay. uh, attending UT online. And um, I work for Goodwill Houston. Okay. And I'm just just excited about life because it has truly been mm -hmm. a journey. And I know there's mm -hmm. so much more to come. Yeah. I'm excited about That's it. That's right. It's awesome. That's right. Rebecca, what are some, if you were to describe yourself with three words, what three words would you choose? Tenacious. Mm -hmm. Determined. And humble. You had a, a humble beginning, as you mentioned. Your life seemed to be on track until it took a detour. So prior to the detour, can you describe a little bit more um, about your life? One thing that I can honestly say is that I've always been a heavy plus size kid, mm. but I never got picked on. I never got teased. I was That's actually a, a bully basher. So if anyone was bullying someone, they would come and get me. <laughs> we don't do the bully thing. Oh, wow. um, so I was a confident kid, mm. but I wasn't cocky. Yeah. You know, I just didn't, don't mistreat people. Yes. I don't like that. I have a, yeah. a, a true issue with that. You don't know what their situation <laughs> is. So yeah, pretty much always joining a club so I wouldn't have to be at home alone. So you, mm. you kept yourself very active yes. and, and also uh, taking up for the... The underdogs yes. should they get get bullied? <laughs> you said that you were um, you were pregnant at the age you were a single mom at the age of twenty four. So you were determined to provide for her. So what? Where did you work and what did you do and how did you provide? So I was working for prior to me working for Memorial Hermit. Okay, I was working for the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. Didn't plan on on getting pregnant, but it happened, and I'm. At that point, when I found out that I was pregnant, I started looking for a nine to five. Within a year's time of me having my daughter, mm -hmm. I did get hired on with Memorial Hermit through a mutual friend of mine and started off as a data entry clerk. Okay. So she had just turned one, the year she was turning one is when I got hired. Because you mentioned that you feel like at some, oh, at a point, you feel like you have arrived, you had corner office. What's what's the pathway to get there? 
So I started off with uh, Memorial Herman right during the merger. It was Memorial, then it was Herman. So what year was this? This was 1998. Okay. And it was right when that merger happened. And, you know, I know God has perfect timing for everything. Mm -hmm. I had no experience in the office setting. I'd always worked with kids. You know, I thought I was a heavy set person and I was intelligent and smart book wise. But as far as getting a job in an office, I just didn't think I could get one. Mm -hmm. I interviewed with this lady, Miss Diane McGee. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, do you have data entry experience? And I said, no. You know, I'm an honest person. I want to, you know, get in there and not be able to do the job. She said, asked me, hey, do you ever work on the cash register? I did the 10 key test, passed, and that's how I got hired in. I was in a relationship, but... It was an abusive relationship mm -hmm. with my daughter's mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. I was on my final written warning. Mm -hmm. And I, my boss said, you know, what's going on? She said, it's, you're a great employee, but why can't you be on time? Mm -hmm. And my hair, I used to wear a bang. And when I pulled my hair back, mm -hmm. she could see. She saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. She was livid. And at that point, she said, I can help you, but you got to want to help yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm she started coaching me and training me, and I promoted, like, immediately. Mm. So you need to be here on time. I don't care if you have to get up. If, if I have to pick you up, you need to be on time. Wow. So she saw something in you, and she was willing to invest that time in you and not give up on you. Because some people would just say, you know, you're I trouble. get another person. Yeah, you're trouble and, yeah. you know, leave. Right, right. That's yeah, sweet. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Uh, yeah. Teresa Anselet. Mm. At that point, really? she I promoted, and she was just on me. Mm -hmm. And she helped me purchase my first home. Um, she helped me just with my credit. She just helped me. Yeah. She helped me. I know God has really placed yeah. some amazing people yeah. in, my in your path. Wow, that's amazing. So, so the first one that we can recognize together is Teresa. Teresa. So how long from that day when you arrived late and she was like, you're late again, to you're getting a... Your the home that she helped you. I'll say within five, five, six years because yeah. I started promoting. Mm. And that abusive relationship that I was in was with her dad, mm. and he would never hit me in front of the kids. The day that he hit me in front of my daughter mm. was the day that I left, and mm. she was five. At this time, I hadn't purchased my home yet, but I left him, yes. and that's when that process started. Mm. I see. Like we said in the intro, mm -hmm. well, you know, um, you went from from the I have arrived to hitting a little bit of rock bottom. Yeah. What happened? Um, what what brought you there? Um, yeah, be, I know it's a tough sub subject. So, well, think. oh, actually, I'll say this: I I truly take accountability for that. Mm -hmm. I, I had arrived, and I was dating, but not dating anyone seriously. And then I ran into a guy from high school. And that's when that started. I, I thought I could change him and I couldn't. He started stealing things from me and little things came up missing and, or I would come home from work early and there was a party going on at my house. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know what? I started indulging more. And it just, from that point, it just kind of unraveled. You know, I just don't really know where that, where it just happened, but I, it happened, and it seemed like overnight, but it was over a period of time. The appeal of drugs is so strong, mm -hmm. and and then it's slippery slope too. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's that kind of that innate character in you, because you, even younger, you said you know you you were the bully basher. Yeah, you <laughs> always wanted to help somebody, yes. and here you were trying to help him. Yeah. But instead, it backfired it did. on you. It did. And mm. um, it goes into the, I had a weight reduction surgery. So um, I used to weigh 400 pounds. And I thought that once I lost the weight, that my life would change. So I had the, the mm. gastric bypass, mm. working for Memorial Hermann. Mm. Oh, no, that's another blessing. Wait, do you get a discount? <laughs> I did. You do? I did. Okay. This, is, this is the great thing to apply. I have gotten so many breaks in my life. Like, I can't. Just take, this is God, I, he's been blessing me yeah. in the midst of all so of my that, mess. He has yes. always blessed me. In the yeah. midst. So but great. you cannot continue 
to do the same things expecting different results. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. eventually it's a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, with the surgery, I did get a discount. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a $15,000 surgery. And that's when the surgery, it wasn't as popular. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people didn't know about it. When you basically went on the slippery slope, um, what what's the fallout? For that? I actually um, ended up losing employment with Memorial Herman. Mm-hmm. I had taken a leave of absence. I was using drugs, but um, I, I never used in front of her. I never took her to um, a crack house or anything like that. I never left her alone because that's my, my love, my daughter. But I wasn't myself. Right. And she knew something was strange. Mm-hmm. You know, and th- this gentleman that I was dating at the time, which leads to a whole nother story, I was with him for about about eight years. Mm. And um, that turn, that pivotal point in my life, he took my vehicle and committed a robbery. Mm. And the FBI came to my job looking for me. So you got you got mm. Caught up in caught the, up in his actions. Yeah. All I could think about was my daughter. Yes. Like my daughter mm-hmm. was a thing that did that kept you yeah. alive. Even yeah. now, she's twenty six, about three twenty seven. She's still mm-hmm. our babies, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's what kept me, just kept me grounded. And um, that's how I, I lost my job. So when you hit rock bottom, what does that look like? Rock bottom is when um, you just don't care. You just, you don't care where you sleep, what you eat, if you eat, how you look, your hair, your, you just don't care. You just give up. I literally just would wake up every day and be like, oh, I'm still alive. Mm-hmm. If I went to sleep, I would be mm-hmm. up three and four days at times. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was embarrassed, didn't want to go around my mm-hmm. family. Because I came from a pretty stable yeah. background, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, my mom, she is um, one kid of eight. Her parents were together for their whole life. I mean, they got married when they were like 14 or 15 years old, and they were together their entire life. I came from a stable Mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. These were things I chose to do. Mm -hmm. And I was embarrassed. I couldn't. My Mm -hmm. rock bottom for me was my family telling people that I'm out of town or, you know, Mm -hmm. just like I didn't exist. Yeah. They didn't want to acknowledge you. Where were you living at this time? Just here and there. And that's when I was standing in the crack house. And I would mm-hmm. just go sit there. And um, even in the midst of all that, I still had like a little hustle about myself. I, I did credit repair. So I have a credit re- restoration business. I, You're like a jack of all trades. Yes. I know. What was it earlier? You said a basket <laughs> design basket and catering. Catering, catering business. Um, credit repair. Credit restoration. Credit, yes. So I'm making money. But then when you get so high, it's just like it's not making sense anymore. Yeah. All right. So we, we've covered enough of the rock bottom. Let's, let's rise up to our turning point. Okay. So when and how did you, I guess, emerge from the crack house? It was right after my birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, my birthday is May 2nd. Can't pinpoint the year. I want to say it was 2000 and. 16 or 2017 Mm -hmm. and I woke up that day well rewind I didn't wake up because I didn't go to sleep (laughs) 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 and I'm looking around at the activity that was going on and I asked one of the ladies that was in the house you know to kind of help me get my hair and stuff together she said you're not coming back and I said no and I left And I just took off walking. And for three days, I still did. I was getting high for about three days. Mm -hmm. And I went and checked myself into the Harris County Psychiatric Hospital. I would always go there intermittently to um, eat, Mm -hmm. take a bath and clean up. And then we'd be closed. And I could stay there like three weeks as long as I would tell them I was uh, suicidal or homicidal. But that was the point I said, I can't do this. And I just, I can't remember how old I turned, but that was in 2016, 2017 that I did that. And that's when I made a decision. I can't. I can't how did she it. know yeah. that you're not coming back? What, what made her say that? I have a very strong spirit. I don't have to say a word. Mm. And she just knew it. Mm. 
but you kind of internalized that you, this was enough. You and needed to change. Uh, I I say that look on on my face, that determined look. Something. Something's about to happen. Mm. <laughs> so you got quiet, got quiet and got your hair done, and um, and then just walked out. I just walked out. So when you come out of the psych hospital, where do you go? This last time that I checked myself in, I actually went through the programs. I actually took the information they were giving me. And again, it goes back to God because there was an opening. They kept telling me there weren't any openings. There was a little apartment you can go stay in for, you could stay there for a month. There were no openings. And the lady who was the director over the house came in. She said, I just got one opening, just came in. Mm. You were able to yeah. have a place to stay. So so I heard bus stop. I stayed there. So you left the psych hospital after the three weeks, and then you stayed at the bus stop that was your home? So this was the in-between. When I would go check myself into the psych hospital mm -hmm. and come out, I would either go to the crack house or I would go to the bus stop. Okay. But it was that one particular bus stop mm -hmm. that I would go to because yeah. it was just a safe place for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to, I attended middle school Cat a corner to that bus stop. There was a store right here. My church that I was going to at the time was down the street. That was just that bus stop on that corner was my house. It became mm. your home it because it's familiar. Home. It's in the epicenter of your life. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing drugs, there's this thing called perimeter. Using drugs, you can't go outside of that perimeter. Mm -hmm. That bus stop was the cutoff point mm -hmm. for me. You mm -hmm. could go past the street. And that was that little, mm -hmm. that was my safe place. Mm -hmm. Like a safe mm -hmm. zone. Because yeah. if you go outside of it in your in your state, you may not yeah, know what to do. Right. In that little area, people knew you. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they knew you. These were people that, I mean, see that I went to high, to high school with or to middle school with or elementary. Mm -hmm. They were not necessarily in an addiction, but they knew me. Mm -hmm. And they knew that wasn't me. Did you have a backpack of stuff? Or, I mean... How do you keep warm? How do you Shower. wash up? How do you do any of that? You don't. I mean, you know, every now and then I may get some wet wipes or something and, and use that and clean it up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then there may be some days where you just don't. You just don't. Mm -hmm. I made the best of it that I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every now and then someone may pass by and give you something or do something for you. The church wasn't too far from there. Mm -hmm. So I could go to the church sometimes and mm -hmm. the ladies there would feed me. And then I would come back to that same spot. Mm -hmm. What happened next? And so from there, I, I went and stayed in that little apartment. I, gosh, I can't think of the name of it. When you leave there, you can only stay there for a limited amount of time. It was mm -hmm. another apartment complex. You go to the classes all day, the mm -hmm. drug rehab classes. They send you somewhere else. They kept sending me to different places, but they were full. They were full. The guy, uh, Arthur, I can't think of his name. He was one of the counselors. He said, I'm going to tell you about this one place. He said, I don't tell anyone about this place, but you got to have a job to go here. And I had gotten a job during one of those little spells where I was in and out with Catherine Vanderpool. I said, I have a job. So if they can vouch for you having a job, you can go here. And that was Oxford House. Um, tell me more about Catherine um, as the intro. Um, some goodwill and of kind people. Yes. Um, it sounded like she saw you at the bus she stop. She did. Catherine, I miss Catherine, I called her. I saw me at, she was seeing me sitting at the bus stop. I was looking for jobs. And at the time, the hair that the girl was fixing, it was a red wig, like raggedy hair. <laughs> bright. <laughs> it's a bright. <laughs> bright red. But underneath that, you know, the drugs had taken my hair out. I looked a hot mess, but I would put that wig on, put a little grease on it. <laughs> and I would sit at that bus stop and go to every little establishment looking for employment. Mm -hmm. And I came in and asked where they hired and they were looking for an office manager. There was another lady there, and I won't say her name, but she said, don't give her a chance. Because she's... She lives down there at that place. I was staying at, um, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. it was Directions of Recovery at that time, um, like a rehab center. So she lives, they asked me where I stayed. I stayed in a trailer park, but it was... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, I was embarrassed. Sure. You know, yeah. I'm told her I stayed in the trailer park down the street. She said, don't give her a chance. But the other young, young lady, Christina, said, you know, she she looks this way, but, I mean, she was very intelligent and she was kind. And, you know, I went in and I know how to speak to people. It's just the way that mm-hmm. I looked. Mm-hmm. You know, you can never judge a book mm-hmm. by its cover. Mm-hmm. And Miss Catherine said, call her in. Mm. And I had I connected with them again. I can't remember. There's a an, an organization that is on Richmond. They help you. If you can get an interview, they'll send you to Dress for Success. Mm. Yes. If you can lock in an interview, they'll um, give you a, a voucher to get hair and supplies. Mm. And I went in to see that counselor, and she said, there's no way you can go and interview with that red wig. <laughs> <laughs> so um, That's when they re- exit right. Exit, yes. <laughs> The lady, uh, she said, we normally don't give people cash. And again, I know God has favor over my life. She said, we normally don't give cash out. Because again, it's, I'm a recovering addict. Going to mm-hmm. give me $30? Mm-hmm. She said, I'm going to give you this cash if you promise to bring a receipt and go to the beauty supply. The beauty supply in the neighborhood mm-hmm. wouldn't accept a, a voucher. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't sell mm-hmm. wigs at Walmart or yeah. Target. Right. So uh, <laughs> she gave me cash and I brought the receipt and got a little short bob wig mm. and went in and Miss Catherine gave me a chance. So mm. I saw an interview with Miss Miss Catherine and mm. I was so impressed. The fact that she saw you at the bus stop mm-hmm. days and that, you know, if she was a judgmental person, you wouldn't be getting a job just like mm-hmm. the other persons. Just don't give exactly. her a chance. But um, it sounded like not only did she give you a chance, she also helped you get a car. She did. She did. Um, you're you're like so highly favored. Did you know that? So far, I'm not even done with the story. She's already got, all, I mean, like mm-hmm. uh, there's a whole list of favors that you That's have right. already received despite yes. the tough the tough situation. It's what you, you put out there. What you give yeah. is mm-hmm. what you get. Every seed you plant will be the harvest that you reap. I planted enough bad seeds. I'm not perfect. And Miss Catherine gave me a chance. Yeah. She helped me get a vehicle. And she actually helped me get um, a part-time job with ASA, Automotive Service Association. She was on to the board. To give you more, week, more income. More income. I was trying to, I was living in Oxford House. By this time, I had moved, transitioned from the recovery home to Oxford House, which was a... a self-sustaining recovery mm-hmm. home but you had to have employment sure to stay there. it's kind of like bring you back towards yes. stability yeah. and, and yes. self yeah. self-sustained independence, independence. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, it really helped me and mm-hmm. i'm living in an oxford house there weren't a lot of people that looked like me the young ladies that were in the house their parents were paying their their mm-hmm. bills so i kind of turned into the house mom Mm -hmm. in that house if you did use drugs you had to get out immediately Mm -hmm. so whenever someone was caught using i was a person they would come to To the bully basher (laughs) (laughs) i was um, miss catherine and her husband sebron had helped me get a vehicle and i was in school so by this time i was back at hcc i had made the dean's list and you had the mm, smarts the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was kind of, and she said, you know, Rebecca, I, I think we're holding you back. And Oh, wow. Yeah. She said, I, I believe wow. you need to, you need more time to start growing your business. And I'm writing a book. She started helping me develop that. And she said, you know, I, I think it would be best for you to seek opportunities somewhere else. And we left on, on good terms, but she just felt like she was holding me back. So she says, okay, your future looks bright. Go after it. Yeah. How did you go after? I really didn't take that too well. <laughs> you know? uh-huh. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, again, it comes back to your faith. Is your faith in a job or is your faith in God? Mm. So I, I started going to church more and mm. just mm-hmm. believing and trusting in his will. Mm -hmm. in his way Mm -hmm. and that's what led me to goodwill i went to a job fair at the workforce solutions on Mm -hmm. westheimer Mm -hmm. and they were hiring and i went in thinking i was going to get an office job because i have all this experience right smart and no one would give me a chance and i met tony out with goodwill 
So we, you want to be a cashier? I'm like, does it pay? And if it pays, yes. And that's how I ended up with Goodwill. So you went to Goodwill. You started out as a cashier. As a cashier. Which Goodwill was this? At the River Oaks. The location. River Oaks. Okay. Oh, so yes. for those of us, those of you who are not mm -hmm. in Houston, River Oaks is kind of like a affluent area. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they probably had good stuff. Huh? They had great things. <laughs> <laughs> this entire ensemble came from that location. Oh. oh yes. That's, you know, thrifting is totally <laughs> yes. in right now. So, okay. So then you are not a cashier right now no now i'm not now you're no, not no, so not. um tell us about your progression because um it seems like your story you get in there mm -hmm. you progress so initially when i went in you know i heard about goodwill but i just didn't really know about goodwill i thought that goodwill was only for um, people that had disabilities and i felt bad at first i thought i was taking a job Mm. from somewhere mm. one else and I, I went in and as a cashier I said this is just too easy for me <laughs> you know so I'm mm. steady going to the manager saying okay I'm now done cleaning my area can I do something else and I was like this you know okay so eventually they started signing me up and that's how I found out about workforce development mm. with Goodwill that's how I found out about mm. the other programs that were there and, and they thought I would be a good candidate for those programs so I would go on my off days I would go to the job connection behind um, the River Oaks Center a uh, Goodwill store and attend those and get those certifications and they would give you uh, incentives like a Walmart card if you attended the mm -hmm. class and you finished and met so many hours and the grant funded programs would provide you with incentives mm. and um, again I just kept meeting people and say you know you're you're different something different about you and believe in that mission Mm. You know, Goodwill, I've never encountered anyone since I've been there that didn't want to help you. Mm. No matter if they were a donation attendant or the president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's everyone's treated the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that just did something. Mm -hmm. Even now, I'm getting mm -hmm. cause Cause it's I'm real. Yeah. The atmosphere mm. that it's just, it's contagious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to be a part of that, yeah. for me, mm -hmm. that's priceless. Yeah. I mean, again, you, he, this is not the first time I've heard your story. I think I've heard it like four times already, and it doesn't get old. But your story is the Goodwill mission, yeah. right? They Their mission is helping those with barriers to employment yeah. And changing lives through the power of work. Yes. And that is exactly your story. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but even your boss yeah. is story. Yeah. And I mean, so many people that work at Goodwill have their own story. Yeah. It doesn't get old hearing your story because it is just so inspiring to see how far you've come, oh. even though you've had so much that you've gone through, but yet look how look how positive. You're just, you know, you're, you're so you're encouraging exuding. and you're just shining. Yes. And, you know, a lot of it is people who have come alongside you and Goodwill is one of those yeah. that has come alongside you. And you also have that desire to help others. Yeah. All this time, I thought Goodwill was just a thrift shop where you donate your stuff mm -hmm. and then you go buy stuff cheap. I had no idea yeah. of all this behind the scenes, the, this workforce development, yes, and yes. I actually mm -hmm. went to that store and that workforce development, mm -hmm. taking a a refugee there yeah, for yeah. the job fair, and everybody's so helpful yeah. and they want to help them to get a job. Yeah. So who, I did not know. Yeah. So this is, I mean, again, uh, we try to inform our audience, yes, right, yes. with with not only um, personal stories, but any good news and good good ideas out there um, to know yes. um, that there's workforce development yes. but the thing is you have to have that you know want to work and mm -hmm. want to the thrive. tenacity you said yes. you're tenacious yes yeah. the tenacity it's it's been in you ever since you were little and still your story is not done mm -mm. so you care. went to that you went through those program <laughs> the work force work development program mm -hmm. and then now you have a job at corporate yes so now i'm in the corporate office mm -hmm. um i wanted to get mm -hmm. position myself 
where I could help someone like me mm -hmm. to be their voice, to understand and be able to translate yes. what they're going through. Yeah. You know, I be an advocate. Yes. Mm. Translate for them mm -hmm. and be the voice for them. Mm -hmm. That was my mission. Yeah. In getting in corporate. Yeah. So this person calls oh. in and says, Hey, you ain't got my check. What they're really saying is, you know, I didn't get my check. I really need my check. What do you need from me in order to yes. expedite this request? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. Be in that mm -hmm. voice, understanding them without yeah. judging them. Right. Yes. Because they just didn't yes. have that the schooling or they didn't they, right. they had to take care of their kids right. or their sisters or it's not that they don't have mm. desire. They just didn't have the resources yeah. or the tools. Right. Yeah. To so, present themselves in right. a way that a, other people expect. Exactly. So exactly. you can help mm. them. Yes. So I know you did mm. such a good job at Goodwill. You were uh, a recipient of a, it's, is it Moriton Citizen of the Year Award in 2022? Yes. What is that award about? It's like the highest award. Yeah, tell yeah. us, talk about that. That really, really shocked me <laughs> because I did, it was unexpected. Yeah. I'm just being me. So to be rewarded for working, I mean, I feel honored. Like even now, like I still can't believe that that they, of all the people, you know, that just, and that was a life changing. Mm -hmm. For me, that was one of those pivotal moments mm. in my life to say, okay, people see you now. Mm -hmm. They see you. Yeah. Not the physical, but you, the yeah. person. Yes. And they know your story, yeah. the good and the, the bad. The good and the bad. And still accept me. Yes. yes. So this, this award, it yes. makes you feel validated. People often say that they don't need validation. But everyone needs yeah. mm -hmm. to be noticed, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. in some shape, form, or fashion, mm -hmm. just to know that you see me. Mm -hmm. During that time when I was using, mm -hmm. or like my mom sometimes refers to as, oh, she's on vacation, there were times when no one was looking for me. Mm -hmm. I was gone three or four years, and no one... Mm -hmm. Not saying they didn't miss me, but no one came looking for mm. me. Mm. So now, if I'm not at work or I'm not in a meeting, hey, yes, mm. just knowing that someone is thinking yeah. about you, mm. everybody needs to be checked yes. on. Have a yes. community. Yeah. Mm. So I see that um, you recently have new reasons to smile. Look yes. at that. Look at that. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> Yes. Um, you have a beautiful smile, and I've seen other videos where you weren't smiling as big. So what happened? I'm through a beautiful couple wanted for my look to match my spirit. Mm -hmm. And they Aww. said they had to do something. Mm -hmm. They felt compelled mm -hmm. to do something, and they didn't have to do that for me. Like, you, you don't have to. You care enough about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I needed to smile. Yeah. You know, I had been happy. Things weren't weren't as bad as they were, but I couldn't smile. Yeah. So, because your teeth weren't yeah. as presentable. They weren't presentable at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so I remember, I remember yeah, the moment because yeah. um, so the first time I met you and heard your story mm -hmm. was at the Morton Lunch Award. Yes. And that's when I saw your story. I think that was in August and then of 22 and then in October we have our annual board retreat yes. and you were one of the so each of these retreats for our dinner we have somebody from Goodwill come and share their story mm -hmm. and you came and there were two people because yes. they won the Moriton Awards and you were one of them and you came and spoke to the group the dinner mm -hmm. and I do remember because we were, I think, sitting at the we same table. We were at the same table, yes. And I remember talking to you, and you were happy, but you were always a little bit kind of like, yeah. didn't want to, you are you were a little shy with your smile. Yeah. I remember then um, after that 
dinner, maybe a few, one of our board meetings after that, it was one of the board members yeah. shared with the group what he noticed, which is really incredible. Yeah. And not only did he notice it, but he took action. Yes, yes. And because he knew, has a friend who's yes. a dentist, basically did a pro bono uh, dental dentistry work. Fast forward <laughs> a year later, so this is now October 2023, we had our board meeting again, uh, the annual board meeting, and at the dinner, Rebecca was invited to come. And you're like a you're like a return <laughs> guest, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and and so you think about the contrast. Yes. Both yes. are celebratory dinners, but one your smile was a little bit you were a little bit, you know, kind of covering it. And this last dinner, I had some pictures with you. You were beaming. Like now, you're yes, just yes, beaming yes. and glowing. All the reasons to smile. All and the so your smile. smile makes me yes, smile. It makes yes, others yes, smile yes, because yes. you have, they're exactly right. You yeah. have this just spirit in you that mm. is just so contagious. Yeah. And um, so, yes, what a beautiful story that somebody noticed it yeah, and took action. It. And I think they've cool. now inspired that dentist yes to each year want to do the same, Thank find you, another Lord. person to yeah, um, give to this bless. gift of a smile to. What a gift. And that's what it's about. Yeah. I love that. I love that they, they saw yeah. something didn't match. Yes. And did something about it. Yes. Okay, so what's your outlook now? And so uh, for me right now is my goal is to continue to be the evidence of faith and to help people get through the steps mm -hmm. so many times in our lives we have this plan mm -hmm. i'm 51 now i'll be 52 so by now in my head when i was in my 20s i was supposed to be retired mm -hmm. helping people get through each day yes just get through today tomorrow's not promised mm -hmm. and tomorrow will take care of itself mm -hmm. but helping people get through today, today. So that's my goal where I am now. Mm. I see on your Facebook mm. posts every day multiple <laughs> inspirational posts, and they and they just um, reflect your feelings, yeah. your mm -hmm. outlook. Yes. Mm -hmm. Planting those seeds. Yes. We may not see them grow, but just keep planting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Becky. I, I, you know, as I was. Preparing to do this interview, I was mm -hmm. just sitting back and thinking about, you know, I said, oh, we're going to go into some tough stuff. But what came back through and through for me was your determination. But I also mm -hmm. noticed that along your path, great people who did not have to do what they did, um, seeing that you were hurt yeah. as a, as a um, abused yeah. individual and try to show you a way to uh, Catherine right yeah. and also the person at the at this yeah. psych hospital I think in life determination sometimes will get you halfway there but if you didn't get the opportunity yeah so mm -hmm. it really takes a two yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm just fully reminded that we all have an opportunity yeah. to be the Catherines to mm -hmm. be the the people that yeah. that give people opportunities yeah and you're trying to do that yourself yeah, I mean I, I hear that in you like the reason you goodwill is a great place to work but you're the reason you're there is not only to earn a paycheck yeah. but you have a purpose there yeah a purpose of helping others because you knew you know what it was like yeah. to be in that position when we started this Lily asked you three words that best describe yourself yeah May I share my three words about Absolutely. you that I've learned um, just from knowing you a little bit more? Um, tenacity is for sure one of them. Um, advocate, because all I hear, even when you were middle school and high school, you always, <laughs> it was about taking care of others. Yeah, yeah. If it's not about taking care of your daughter, mm -hmm. um, it's about taking care of other people who walked your path now and being there for them. So you're an advocate. And radiance. Mm. You just exude radiance. That's a perfect word. You just, you shine. And oh. I mean, your text, 
I was telling Lily, I was like, her texts are just so positive and encouraging and so bright. And yes. you just exude this radiant spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's beautiful to hear your story for someone who's been mm -hmm. through all that you've been through yeah. to be where you are today and yet still have that radiant spirit. Yeah, yeah. thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Becky, there's probably other young ladies sitting in some crack house somewhere. Yeah. What would you want to say to them right now? Protect your peace. Keep pressing forward. Mm. Oh, and get through today. Let tomorrow take care of itself. There's a future still. Yeah. Mm. You have to know that. Know that you're worthy. Mm. You're worthy. And that God sees you. Mm -hmm. People change. But his love, it doesn't change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's consistent and it's steadfast. It doesn't mm -hmm. change. So keep mm -hmm. letting him shine through you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. <laughs> but any final words you wanted to share before we wrap up? You know, I, I tell people this all the time to be kind to people. It doesn't cost anything to be kind mm -hmm. and to bless their hearts. Because mm -hmm. you don't know what that person may be dealing with. Mm -hmm. And they have something going on. Mm -hmm. And just be kind and speak to people. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge people. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's only one perfect God. That's it. Mm -hmm. So treat everyone with kindness, dignity, and respect. Thank you for being so vulnerable and open. It's a pleasure. Thank you for sharing and helping us to see that mm -hmm. determination. Help us to see that we can be a, um, a minister. Oh, and that faith in God yes. above all. Mm -hmm. um, just thank you for, for, for being here. We've all been blessed. I hope you like this episode. I don't know if you realize behind each episode, there's a lot of things happening. The pre-production planning, the post-production editing, and the interview itself. It will really encourage us if you like the video, and hit the subscribe. Thank you.